Hey everybody, Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper here and welcome back to the channel where I talk about different ways of planning in your bullet journal or other planner systems so that you can come up with a system that is yours and useful. I like to share my journey so that maybe other folks can figure out ways that planning can work for them to live whatever life you feel like living. Today I'm going to be talking about how I plan for work using a couple different systems and how they all work together. I'm going to be featuring these three notebooks. Let's dive right in. Of course, the first thing I have to highlight is my Google Calendar. I have three different Gmail accounts, one for personal, one for my side business, and one for work. Our whole team is on Google. If you've been around here, you know that I love digital planning in terms of events. None of this stuff really goes into my bullet journal in terms of like remembering when something is. If I have to be somewhere, it goes in my uh, GCal. And mostly because I share this calendar with a lot of people and at work we collaborate on a lot of projects. So it makes sense to have all of my time be tracked in this Google Calendar. There's a lot of things that we use this for. Mainly we want to set meetings that have uh, a direct explanation as to what the point of that meeting is along with all of our Google Drive notes and plans that we have. As you might know, one of my planning principles is if it is something that needs to be shared, it goes on Google. So that is my guiding principle for a lot of the things that you will be hearing today. So number one, put everything in my Google Calendar. I briefly touched on this in my other video, but this is my Baron Fig Confidant notebook that I use for my work notes. As I said, as I said, if it needs to be shared and collaborated, it goes onto Google and the rest goes in here. This is for making sense of my own thoughts, things that are notes for myself and planning out things that I want to get my head around. And I'm using it more like the traditional bullet journal system, which includes things like indexing, which I frankly have never used uh, that often. And I wanted to try it out now because there's something that writer calls the dedicated index. And that's where you can put different projects and focus just on those spreads in the index. So one of my major roles is I coordinate a course and that's the 3961 that you see everywhere in my notebooks. And I wanted to just list, okay, here are the pages of the notes that pertain to this project along with marketing is another major part of my work. And when I go in, I number all of the pages here so that I can go through and as I take notes, keep track of them. Again, you can see this is very, very messy. I do not <laughs> try to make this very pretty at all. And I just turn the page and take some notes if I want to come up with some thoughts before a meeting or get my thoughts around what a project is going to scale like. This is where it goes. And some of the things that I have in here, um, if you work with anybody, it's helpful that I have a list running of all the things I need to talk to that person about. And it's just addressed with their name and just the running list so that I can keep everything together for our check-ins at any time and follow up on necessary items. Something else that really helps me in this setup is that I keep track of changes for my curriculum all year long and I make big changes during the semester change and over the summer. So maybe you have a project that you're keeping tabs on and constantly improving over time. And I have a Avery tab here that just sticks in so that I can keep track of this page. But throughout the year, whenever somebody has an issue or comes up with an idea that I want to use, I write it down on these pages and throughout the semester build on this list so that at the end I can look back and say, oh, I remember in week eight, this is a really big struggle and this caused a lot of friction. Or in week nine, someone had a really great assignment idea. Let's add that in for next semester. So this tab and this spread really helps me just d download a lot of information and keep track of it for a future date. Okay, and then whenever there is a project that has multiple pages, I do what's called threading, and there's a page number here. It's actually page 45, but the last time I talked about artistry workshops was on page 23, so that you can kind of see that there are other things that are collected together under this kind of a note. So this is, again, where I put my thoughts down and try to organize that. Everything else goes into Google Drive. That's the easiest way for us all to have access to copy and duplicate notes as we go on. Any of the tasks that I take note of in here, I write them down, but I also copy them over into my everyday bullet journal. 
Okay, if you have been around for a little while, you know that this is my everyday carry. All the tasks that I have go into here. I try not to lose track of them by writing them all down in one place. So I'm my personal, my side business, and all my work stuff, the tasks go in this notebook. And you've seen how I set this up. If not, I will link it up above in the card so that you can take a look at how I actually use this. But again, this is for dumping all the tasks so that I can keep track of what's going on. This year, I started doing a weekly page so that if I think of anything that I have to do at some point this week, including anything for work, including anything for my side business and at home, it all just gets dumped into one place so that I can look at it real quick and see what needs to be addressed and not clog up all of my dailies. So a common question that people will ask is whether it feels redundant to kind of copy things that I see in notes in Google Drive into here or notes that I write in my work bullet journal into here. And I want to say no, because even though it's repetitious, the part of doing that is that it helps me whittle down what is important, helps me migrate what I need to do in a more intentional way. And when I copy things over, sometimes I copy it over with a little bit more notes, a little bit more thought and in a different order. So putting it down on paper frees it from my mind and the chaos of the things that swirl around in there and allows me to reorganize it in a visual way and that gives me a stronger sense of what I'm doing next. So I don't find it repetitious. I find it to be useful because it helps me organize it differently each time I write it. Another big part of what I do is manage email. And as we all do, we fall into the trap of using our email as a to-do list. And I have been working on refining my email management techniques. You can see that on my Instagram stories, follow along, but trying to be more clear about the labels that I put onto these things, using more colorful labels so that I can catch my attention better and just keep track of the things that I need to reply to and act on and archive the rest. Honestly, what happens is I just hoard a lot of resources and think that I'm going to use them and then I don't. So part of it is just getting honest about what are the things that I actually want to use and what are the things that are just going to go away. So far, I've whittled down my inbox from like 1500 down to 150 and I'm trying to keep it that way. Wish me luck as the semester starts. And then lastly, I think that many of you know that I am a teacher, so I write curriculum, I teach it, and I work with college students. And each day I am taking notes in class with this notebook. So this doesn't have to be anything in particular. I'm just using a homemade notebook that I bought from a street artist in South Korea when I got to be there for a day during a flight layover. And it's just a beautiful little craft paper notebook that he hand bound and it, it's just it was so beautiful I had to buy it and now I'm just going to use it to take notes attendance stuff like that and anything that has, is happening in the class as it happens will go in here and this will probably last me three different semesters to be honest for some of you, you might want to combine these notebooks so that it's in one place. And because I'm working from home, I don't got to carry things anywhere. So I am just using two notebooks right here. And it's helpful for me to have visual difference in what it is that I'm putting my stuff into. When I think about teaching, I'm like, oh, then I'm going to reach for this. When I think about work, I know I'm going to reach for this. And it makes it different enough in my mind to allow me to reach for two different things. If that doesn't work for you, please don't do it. This works for me. It does not have to work for you. It really helps me when I get honest about what are the techniques that work best for my mind. So these are ideas that work well for me and hopefully it reveals something that really works well for you. So this is how I'm organizing my work through a combination of digital and paper. I hope that it reveals something for you. Do you have any questions or how are you using your notebooks for work, project planning and things like that? Please leave your notes down below. If you thought this was helpful, go ahead and click like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.